Harry Davis. So you're driving solo now, huh? Yep. Dad let me take her out alone for the first time yesterday. Larry, that's swell. I hope you'll be a safe driver like your dad. How many, Larry? Oh, shoot the work, Mac. Make it five. So is our dad to count today. About being a safe driver, Mac. I'm going to be the safest driver you ever saw. Dad said I can have the car a lot if I take good care of it. If I don't bang it up or do anything that costs extra money. Well, there's more to it than driving safely to keep a car from costing extra money. Well, what do you mean, Mac? I mean driving economically. Economically? How can you drive economically? Some cars just burn more gas and oil than others. Depends on the kind of car you drive. I got news for you, Larry. Can you stick around for a few minutes? Well, sure, Mac. Pull your car over there. I still say that economy depends upon the kind of a car you drive, doesn't it? Some drivers go a lot farther and for a lot less money, and with the same kind of car. Now, take your dad, for instance. Your dad's what I call an inexpensive driver. Why, some of the people that trade here with the same kind of cars cost them twice as much to drive, and simply because of the way they drive. Oh, you're kidding, aren't you, Mac? No, Larry, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. You had my job, Larry, you'll see what I mean. Almost everybody here in town deals with me. I've got a list right up here of what I call my inexpensive drivers. The good drivers who get the most miles out of their cars for the least money. Believe me, there, there aren't very many of them either. Well, you said Dad's on your list, didn't you? Yeah. Your dad gets the most miles per gallon out of this model car of anybody else here in this town. But even your dad could save car expense in other ways. Mac, what's the secret formula? I'm going to have to buy gas out of my own money after the day. But I don't get it, Mac. Why are you interested in economy? I should think you'd want people to spend money. You see, Larry, I figure it this way. I'm in the business of selling service to my friends and neighbors. And I want them to keep on being my friends, and I want them to keep on being my customers. So I figure it this way. If I can help them get the most miles per dollar out of their cars, they're going to keep on being my friends and customers for a long time to come. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Economical driving has become sort of a hobby with me. I've made quite a study of it in the past 25 years. Well, Mac, maybe you can save a little gas or oil by the way you drive. But in the long run, it costs a certain amount of money to maintain any car. You can't do anything about it. Larry, you can do something about it. See that poster over there gotten out by the safety council? It says just what I've been trying to tell you. Let's go over and take a look at it. Drive cheaply and you drive safely. Save engine wear, clutch, brakes, tires, and gasoline. Can you really save on all those things? You sure can, Larry. Well, what's the most important, Mac? Everything is important, the big things and the little things. Now, for instance, take the finish on your car there. To keep it looking bright and new, you want to wash it frequently. And that goes for the chrome as well as the paint. You see, washing not only removes the dirt, but it removes all the corrosive substances, such as salt and calcium chloride, that you pick up while you're driving along the road. Well, keeping this buggy clean is one of my regular jobs. Well, believe me, Larry, that pays off. That's why your dad always gets such a good trade in. Let's go over and take a look at that car over there. Now, this car belongs to what I call an expensive driver. He doesn't take any care of it. See the way these dents are starting to rust through? And yet the man who owns this car is always kicking because he doesn't get enough for his cars when he trades them in. I see what you mean now, Mac. But what about those other things on the list? I mean it. I'm serious. OK, 
Okay, Larry, you asked for it. Let's go right down the list, starting with engine wear. In cold weather particularly, I believe in babying an engine a little when you start it. And in cold weather, you should always let your engine run for a minute or two before you drive it off. You see, cold oil doesn't circulate as freely as warm oil. And any time of the year, once the car is underway, I always give my engine time to hit its stride. You know your car is like a good runner or a fast track man. It has to warm up slowly. So watch your temperature gauge. When it reaches normal, that means it's okay with your engine to drive normally in all gears. And I know from experience that climbing hills can be mighty hot on your engine, too. If your engine strains and labors in high gear, shift down. When you shift down, you'll climb a hill just as fast and with no extra wear on your engine. Of course, if your car has an automatic transmission, it'll take care of itself. But right now, we're talking about a car like your family. Well, it makes sense to me, Matt. What's next on the list? The clutch. And you can save on that, too, by learning to do just one simple little thing. Keep your left foot on the floor. On the floor? Yes, sir. By keeping it there, you can't ride the clutch and unconsciously cause the slippage that grinds away the clutch lining. Clutch work runs into big bills. Just remember, keep your left foot on the floor until you actually need to use the clutch. When you start your car moving, let the clutch out slowly and step on the gas slowly. Fast jackrabbit starts help wear out the clutch, the tires, and the whole car. And another thing. On a hill, use the foot brake to keep your car from rolling back. And if you kill your engine on a hill, either use the foot brake or the hand brake to hold the car. Holding your car by slipping the clutch not only causes a lot of extra clutch wear, it's not safe. You know, of course, that the clutch works in close coordination with the brake, or at least you should make them work that way. But you'd be surprised how few people do it. When you're going to stop the car, apply the brakes, but don't touch the clutch, so the drag of your engine helps the brakes slow the car. Then, just before the car stops, push in the clutch pedal so you won't kill the engine. Always start slowing down in plenty of time to keep from jamming on your brakes. Shift to second gear, for here again, the drag of the engine will help to slow the car. And fan your brakes to keep from overheating them, going down steep hills. For the easier you are on your brakes, the longer they're going to last, the longer your tires will last. And by all means, keep your brakes in adjustment. It saves money in the long run, and it may save your life. Those last two, Max, tires and gas, they seem to be the things to save the money on. Yeah, that's right, Larry. Now take tires. Most people spend a whole lot more on tires than they really need to, especially since there are so many simple little things they can do to get more mileage out of their tires. For example, it's smart to check your tire pressure regularly. And I find that it's just as easy to stay off the car track, to drive around holes, to avoid broken glass, to keep from scraping the tires against the curb and to keep from running your tires into the curb. And another thing, easy on the brakes is easy on the tires. The tire marks you sometimes see on the road are written in rubber. Rubber scraped off the tire. Wasted rubber, wasted money. And take it slow and easy on the turns. Loud tire squealing means too much speed or too light tire pressure and both cost money in extra tire wear. Not too long ago, I saw some tests of what actually happens to a tire in a fast turn. You know, you could actually see the rubber flying off that tire ground a bit. And that rubber flying away is money flying away. The modern tire has a lot of miles built into it. Miles that you throw away when you stop and start too fast. You know, people do funny things sometimes. You know uh, old Mrs. Martin? Oh, yeah, I know her. Well, yesterday she came bumping in here on a flat tire. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll show you.
Isn't that a mess? <laughs> so I went out. He says, young man, I've just had a puncture, and I want you to fix it for me. I'm going up to the bank, and I'll be back in half an hour. I said, Mrs. Markham, that tire is ruined. Why didn't you call somebody and have it fixed on the road or get towed in? She says, young man, I just drove that tire four blocks. Now, you get it fixed and have it fixed right away when I get back. Well, what did you do? You couldn't fix that, Mac. Well, I, I saw her coming, and I was all ready for her. I had the tire to right here, and I said, Mrs. Markham, I've been trying to find some way to fix your tire. She almost blew her top then, but she shelled out for a new tire and tube just the same. Been a whole lot cheaper for her if she paid for a towing job or having the tire fixed out on the road. If people that have punctures would only get somebody to fix it, they don't know how to do it themselves, they'd save themselves a world of money. Hey, Mac, what time does Mr. Donaldson want his car? Not till 5 o'clock, Jack. Is uh, Mr. Donaldson on your list of inexpensive drivers? Oh, he sure is, Larry, right at the top. He gets by spending pennies, where expensive drivers would have to spend dollars. Have you got time to listen to the rest of it? Well, sure, Mac. Well, I have, if you have. All right, let's go over and sit down. Gasoline. You know, gasoline to your car is like air is to a runner. The faster he goes, the more air he uses. So he has to breathe deeper and faster. And when a car goes fast, it uses more gas. Of course, if you're taking a long trip and you're interested in getting there, the extra gas you'd use won't slow you down to 35 when the speed limit is 55. But on the highway or in town, you can save a lot of gas just for the way you drive. Let's start at the beginning. The way you start your car, how you use the choke, and how you shift are especially important to you, since your car doesn't have an automatic choke or an automatic transmission. To start a cold engine, pull the choke out. Just as soon as the engine starts, push the choke in at least halfway. You push it in all the way as soon as the engine runs smoothly without it. Don't choke an already warmed up engine. Overchoking can waste more gas than any other bad driving habit. Take it easy when you start. Just get your car rolling and low without gunning. Then shift through seconds and get into high gear by the time you go in 25. You'll be surprised how easy that is on your gasoline money. Take your stops easy too. Quick stops just waste the gas you use getting your car rolling. And when you're waiting for a light, don't bounce the accelerator. If you don't raise your engine, you'll save gas by the gallon. I uh, told you about the tire test I saw. Well, I saw another test that same day. One-tenth of a gallon of gas was put into the testing tank of two identical automobiles. The black car was to be driven like I'm telling you how to drive. The light car was to be driven show-off style. But both were to stay inside the legal speed limit. The light car shot off like a street, while the other fella took it easy, like I'm telling you to do. In no time at all, the light car was stalled, out of gas. In only a couple of seconds, the properly driven car rolled by and went on. And by golly, it went almost twice as far as the other car. I could hardly believe it myself. It just goes to show you that good driving pays off any way you take it. More miles to gallon or more money in the pocket. Well, Larry, that's the story of getting the most out of your car for the money. Gee, thanks, Mac. Let me see if I've got it all straight. You save on engine wear by warming the engine up thoroughly before starting off. By driving slowly at first, to let the engine hit its stride. And shifting into a lower gear when the engine's working too hard. You save your clutch by keeping your left foot on the floor. By avoiding jackrabbit starts, 
By using your hand brake or foot brake, keep the car from rolling backward. You save your brakes by letting the engine help brake the car whenever possible. By slow stops, by fanning the brakes, and by keeping them adjusted. You save on tires by taking it slow on the curves. By avoiding car tracks, broken glass, holes. By not scraping or bumping into the curb. By easy starts and easy stops. And by checking the pressure regularly. And you save on gas by properly choking. By keeping your foot off the accelerator when you're stopped in traffic. And by shifting into high by the time you're going 25. Well, that's all there is to it. You save on everything and you get there just as fast. Gosh, Matt. Thanks a million. I won't forget a word of it. You know, I'd better head for home. So long, Mac. You just keep your eye on me. I'm going to be on that list of yours. I bet he will at that. <laughs>